good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for taking the time to come and uh, see myself and uh, see what Almac has to offer in the area of uh, API and biocatalysis. Um, so my name is Tom Moody. Uh, I've been with Almac now for 14 years. I'm a synthetic chemist by original training, and I've come up through the organization to my co current role as uh, head of biocatalysis and isotope chemistry, so pretty much uh, responsible for anything to do with enzyme discovery and enzyme application right through to the application of enzymes uh, and labeling of uh, small molecule, peptide, and, C4 um, and antibody drug conjugates. So I've have got a couple of slides just to say who, who's Almac and where we're from. Uh, we're headquartered in Northern Ireland in the United Kingdom. Uh, we're a privately owned company, around 3,400 uh, employees. Uh, just uh, late last year and early this year, we opened up our, uh, our Asian facilities, uh, offices in Singapore and also in Tokyo and Japan. Uh, we have over 30 years experience uh, serving over 600 clients, so a lot of uh, wealth and experience within the group. And we also have a headquarters based in uh, Pennsylvania in the US, uh, a recent investment over $200 million. Um, so as I said, the company's been uh, going for, for many years, uh, founded in 1968 uh, by uh, Sir Alan McClay. It's went through uh, many guises throughout the years, and most recently in 2009, it actually became a foundation. So we're actually uh, a charitable trust, which means any profits that we make go back directly into the company or into local universities uh, to increase our technology. So what makes Almac unique is uh, within the Northern Ireland site, we have all uh, the facilities within one campus, uh, right from biomarker discovery work and diagnostics uh, through to API manufacture uh, and, and the chemistry side and the sciences side, uh, radio labeling capabilities, GMP manufacturing. And just this year, we've doubled the capacity of our plant so we can make uh, hundreds of kilos of API or half ton, depending on what the volume productivity is. Uh, right through to uh, API formulation in the drug product, packaging and distribution to uh, a global network so on this site, we have around uh, 2,500 people and around 1,000 people in the US. So a fairly substantial size of organization to be privately owned. So I'm part of the, the sciences part, so the chemistry side on the API side. So what do we offer in the API development side? So obviously early phase development work is a big part of what we do, taking medchem routes, scaling them up rapidly to deliver first in man uh, API material. Uh, over the last couple of years, we've brought in Charles Shields, who leads up our late stage uh, uh, phase development. Uh, so again, we have commercial products now that have went through validation in our plant. Uh, we have a large analytical team of over 200 analysts, again, which does contract research work, but also supports all the chemistry and biocatalysis capabilities that we have within LMAC. Uh Production, so GMP production, commercial manufacture of API, that then can go into drug product in our facilities. Biocatalysis, and that's really what I want to focus on today with a little bit of chemistry uh, and our biocatalysis capabilities and what, what we're doing in the area of biocatalysis. Uh, also solid state, and this group really bridges the API into drug product uh, and looking at polymorph work, solid form, and so on, and, and crystallization. So in the chemistry that we have, uh, the science is part of around 200 scientists. Uh, we have a couple of technologies that we're looking at, uh, biocatalysis and, and also ultrasound. And I'll show some examples of how we've been using ultrasound to speed up the rates of reactions and uh, some biotransformations that we've done within LMAC. So where are we applying it? Primarily, obviously, in the pharmaceutical industry, but in biocatalysis, we're using our enzymes outside of that field in the area of uh, flavor and fragrance, uh, agrochemicals, and over the last couple of years, doing more synthetic biology projects and particularly looking at uh, uh, biofuel type uh, work. So what platform technologies have we got? Uh, this is a hypothetical molecule just showing the different types of enzymes. Uh, so from chiral alcohols, which is really the, the bread and butter of what we do, ketoreductases, resolutions using hydrolase enzymes. Uh, a lot of work in the area of uh, ketone manipulation using bay villiger monooxygenase enzymes, and I'll show an example of uh, where we've evolved an enzyme for that type of transformation. Sulfur oxidation to sulfoxide to sulfones using BVMO enzymes. Uh, dealkylation and dealkylation using P450 enzymes, peroxygenase enzymes. Uh, primarily focused in the area of metabolites. Uh, hydroxylation of aromatics to catechols to cystiols to phenols. Uh, and these processes we've scaled to multi-ton. Preparation of chiralamines, again, through transamination or dynamic kinetic resolutions using hydrolase enzymes. 
uh, ester manipulation, uh, resolutions, desymmetrization, selective esterification, selective amide formation using enzymes, hydroxylation, again using P450s, uh, peroxygenase enzymes to uh, oxidize unactivated carbons. Uh, a lot of expertise, not only on uh, metabolite synthesis, but also the scale up of these, uh, these processes. And we have a project at the minute which we're looking at making 200 metric tons of a product where we're doing a selective oxidation of a steroidal backbone uh, at the sixth position uh, of, the, of, the, of the B ring. Uh, nitrile manipulation, nitrile hydratases, nitrilases to go to the acid or to the amide selectively. Uh, a lot of work in the area of double bond saturation using ene reductases, but also epoxidation of double bonds, uh, making the pair acid in situ. Uh, using a hydrolase enzyme, and that's a really nice way to drop the cost contribution of MCPPA to a process where you simply drive the reaction in ethyl acetate, the enzyme makes the pair acid of acetic acid, and then that goes on and epoxidizes your double bond. Um, so this is just a list of the enzymes that we have, and last year we launched uh, a partnership with DSM, which means we have access to DSM enzymes, and Almac, uh, DSM has access to Almac enzymes, which means we have a huge collection of enzymes at our disposal, that we can start to access a wide variety of different types of structural motifs um, from carbon-carbon bond formation right through to the oxidative, oxidoreductases, lyases, and so on. Um, so why biocatalysis? This is straight from textbooks. Uh, for me, the real benefit for using biocatalysis is that you can shorten synthesis. You can take multi-step synthesis. Uh, because they're very regio and chemoselective, you can remove a lot of protective group chemistry, and you can start to uh, increase your throughput on, on plant. A couple of examples that we've done, we've had some steroid work where we did a transamination where we removed eight steps of chemistry. We had another project which was a multifunctional building block where it was originally an eight step where we took the four using three different enzymatic systems. So again, mixing and matching both the chemistry and the biocatalysis expertise. So on the chemistry side, as I said, we do a lot of early phase uh, development work, so a lot of expertise and that rapid scale up and introduction of biocatalysis into the chemistry. Uh, this is just an example. Uh, of, it was a multi-step synthesis, 17-step synthesis. A real killer for this project was a, there was a resolution step uh, midway through the process that used a tartaric acid uh, crystallization. We developed it to run with a savonase enzyme by a resolution where we uh, doubled the yield and increased the optical purity of the process. Again, Delivery of different quantities from small scale, uh, non-GMP work right through to kilo supply of GMP material. Again, having all the analytical capabilities in place to make sure that we're not putting any GTIs into the final uh, material uh, and keeping uh, an eye on that uh, aspect of the, the quality. Again, on the late stage uh, <coughs> process development work uh, led, led by Charles Shields, again, an example of a highly potent API, multi-step synthesis, bringing in different expertises within Almac. Uh, requiring 10 kilo batches. The, the registration batches, batches have been complete, and the three validation batches will be completed later this year, uh, early next year. So I, I want to discuss a little bit more of a specific project. This was a phase three uh, API building block. It was a chiral ether. Uh, a chiral ether, where it was originally, uh, this chiral center was originally used uh, chemocatalysis, or a Niori type reduction but the Niori type reduction was uh, failing to give the optical purity that was required. So the customer asked us, could we use a biocatalysis approach? And obviously looking at the structure, it looks fairly obvious, obvious that you could do it via ketoreductase. So again, some key specifications, very tight specifications on quality, on impurity uh, profiling, and obviously keeping an eye on the scale up of the fermentation to deliver the actual biocatalyst, uh, ultimately with a low cost of goods for this uh, low volume uh, uh, product. So again, there was four, four parties involved in the project. Uh, the project had to be outsourced to a low cost economy and this, pro this project went to India. So there was a customer that required material. There was Almac who developed the process, developed the enzymatic step. There needed to be key raw materials shipped in from China into India and some materials in from Europe. So there needed to be some security of supply and then obviously a manufacturer uh, that could actually handle bioprocesses. So this is how the project worked. The uh, project was initiated with Almac. We did a 30 gram proof of concept sample. That was shipped to the customer. It passed analysis. That then initiated process development. We delivered a process that was uh, scalable. We then started to look at the tech transfer documentations. Tech transferred to India. and We scaled up the material and delivered uh, uh, several hundred kilos of product for the customer. 
Again, the fermentation was developed. It had to go to uh, thousands of liters. Uh, some key aspects for the for the fermentation was the glucose feed was important, so you couldn't uh, you minimize buildup of acetate because acetate is well known to kill E. coli cells. A lot of work went into the downstream process and in the homogenization because that was critical to get actual active enzyme. So again, bringing in different aspects of the chemistry, the biochemistry, and the biology, and making it into a product that we could actually scale. Again, this was just a breakdown of the chemistry. Um, Starting off with a commercially uh, available building block, doing some Mazumi chemistry, building up the beta keto ester, the keto reductase to make the chiral alcohol, the stereo uh, hydrolysis, followed by alkylation on through to the file, final product via lithyl reduction. Again, some key aspects of the chemistry had to be controlled, particularly impurity profiling, because quality was very, very uh, important. Keto reductase is. Uh, it was evolved to eventually uh, use IPA as the, as the hydrogen source, which is really the, the, the most favored uh, hydrogen source nowadays. Again, cred worked at pH 6. Um, uh, Optimum was it worked between 6 and 8, but the Optimum was at pH 8. Again, it's uh, working at a range of temperatures as well. Again, just on the impurity profile, some key aspects needed to be controlled, not only the inhibitors from the THF solvents, but also some of the downstream impurities that wouldn't go through into the final specification. So again, bringing in both the analytical and the purification capabilities within ALMAC. So on the evolution side, we've developed over the last two to three years uh, a larger uh, biological department within the group. So again, we can now take enzymes from a base and then evolve it through multiple rounds to get into a much more enhanced enzyme. So again, we've built molecular modeling capabilities, and this is just a molecular model of one of our keto reductases, and starting to look at and focus at different uh, catalytic activities, increasing solvent tolerance, um, substrate uh, diversity, and so on. Again, a lot of expertise, not only in E. coli, but also uh, expertise in streptomyces, pyxia, and over the last year, aspergillus, where we're looking at expressing other higher, uh, higher type enzymes. And we've developed a, a novel glycosylation technology that we can now start to glycosylate proteins within E. coli. Where we're actually starting to use this technology to stabilize enzymes, which are much more stable for solvent environments in uh, API production. I think this is a nice example of a, a BVMO uh, where the, the chemo oxidation completely failed. So again, we needed to oxidize the ketone to the corresponding ester. Uh, conventional chemistry failed because the acetylene would be taken out, so we used a, VV, a BVMO enzyme, a Bayvilliger monooxygenase, to do this. Uh, the oxidation followed by a lipase selective hydrolysis to deliver the uh, desired alkyne alcohol. Again, this was fine for several kilos. It had to go to the next stage, so we had to evolve the enzyme. So we did the molecular model. We identified some key residues within the active site, which we were able then to increase. By changing these residues, we were able to increase bulky, bulky uh, residues, increase uh, different preferences. Again, we could start to bring in more bulky aromatics as well, so not just for the molecule that we were looking at. Um, so that's just a little bit on sort of the chemistry side and how we've been using it to make APIs. We're also looking at uh, waste removal, and we've developed uh, cyanide dihydratase enzymes, which can be used to remove cyanide. These enzymes are very, very active. Um, you can see here at 0.5 mg uh, per liter of products. So again, from a productivity point of view, very, very useful. Again, we can access uh, libraries of these enzymes pretty, pretty easily. This is just a colorimetric assay. Yellow means very active. Black means not so active. And again, through design of experiment methodology, we can easily um, tune a process to your needs. We've also been using enzymes in slightly different guises, where uh, not only for chiral synthesis, but for the manipulation of impurities. So for example, if you have a multi-step synthesis, you get a product. Sometimes we get impurities, and uh, they're very difficult to sparge. So we've been using enzymes to modify the impurity in situ, change its physical properties, and then we can easily uh, remove it through conventional purification, may it be trituration, extraction, uh, or distillation. So this is a, a project. It was a diol. It was a... Uh, Contaminated with three isomeric impurities. Uh, we used the hydrolase to selectively acetylate the three imps. We made the hemisuccinate, and then we simply washed out with base. So using enzymes in a very unique way to actually increase productivity and get materials in and out of the plant as quick as possible. I think this is a really nice example of thinking outside the box, uh, where we had an API contaminated with glucose and lactose. It was very difficult to separate these using conventional chemistry. So we used the Saccharomyces to smoke glucose out to CO2. 
we used the streptococcus to break lactose into glucose and galactose, and then we used our Saccharomyces again to, uh, to remove the glucose and galactose into CO2, delivering the clean API. So again, having the expertise on the biology side, the microbial expertise, we can then start to apply that into our chemical plants. We also have the analytical methodology to show we have no biomass contamination, cleaning in place, uh, recombinant enzyme, purity removal, and so on. And we have large collections of P450s, uh, self-sufficient P450s, and the human SIPs. We also have metalloporphins and microsomes, so we can start to access metabolites in one step from your API. We've also been using this technology to make um, drug leads, so diversification of API, so you can start to modify your, uh, your parent compound very easily by hydroxylation. So this is some work that we've been doing in the application of ultrasounds. So ultrasounds involves cavitations. If these bubbles collapse on a surface, you can see they, they collapse unsymmetrically. And what they do is they drive the liquid towards these surfaces. So that's really starting to bind uh, enzymes towards surface to increase your mass transfer. If this happens in liquid culture, what you into, you actually increase temperature, you increase pressure. So once again, you're increasing mass transfer. So you're really starting to bind up your rates of reaction. So this is just a lab setup. You can see here it's uh, semi-continuous. This is the batch reactor out the bottom outlet valve into a diaphragm pump into the flow cell. This flow cell is completely temperature regulated, and that's your probe. And then back into the top of your reactor. So we know any effect we get is actually not due to temperature increase. It's actually due to the ultrasound. So this was an example. It was a natural product, benzylation, we wanted to do. Uh, benzylations are notoriously difficult to do or sluggish. Uh, it required 40 grams of enzyme per liter, so again, pretty high. And uh, due to the increased amount of enzyme, the downstream processing was pretty difficult. So we, we wanted to see could ultrasound be applied. And you can see when we dropped the enzyme load into 6 grams a liter, the, the conversion rate dropped way off. But whenever we used ultrasound, we were getting complete conversion. So in this case, we got a 6.6-fold increase in activity. So this is where you can take a, an existing batch reactant and make it, quick, make it much better very, very quickly by using a, an engineering approach. So what this meant is we were able to drop the cost contribution per kilo uh, from $400 to $60 per kilo. And because we're using less enzyme, less crud in, less crud out, it was a much easier workup. So that was a, a summary just to give you an idea of the sort of types of project we have running through Almac on the preclinical, greater than 50 projects per year, early stage projects, 34 typically per year, uh, right through to the commercial uh, and the late stage projects, four and two. And then in the drug product side, 45 projects and 16 projects run in the year. Sort of give you a feel of the, of the size and the throughput of the organization. Um, so we have, within Almac, we obviously have the science part, but we also uh, look very much at project management. We have a dedicated project management team that looks after all the projects. So any project that you do with Almac would either be run by the team leader or a dedicated PM. So again, they constantly review the performance of the project, look at some uh, specific KPIs, close out meetings, kick off meetings, et cetera. And again, communication is very important to us. And uh, you can see here written on the slides, uh, it's an opportunity to, to tackle problems with very easily when you have that direct contact either with the PEM or with the technical staff within Almac. So if any of that was of any interest, please come and visit us at our booth, 42 Hello 8 And I'd be very pleased to talk to you about biocatalysis. Any questions? If anybody has any questions and they want to see me afterwards, I'll be here for an extra five, 10 minutes or at my booth. OK, thanks very much.